Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on transmission line theory. For this video, I'm going to focus on VSWR. VSWR actually stands for Voltage Standing Wave Ratio. Beside the definition of VSWR, I'm going to show it to you how can we actually derive the equation for VSWR. In short, VSWR is simply the voltage maxima over the voltage minima. Don't worry as for now. Later on, as mentioned, I will show it to you step by step how I actually derive the equation of VSWR. This will be the part 9 series discussion on transmission line theory. So if you're keen to know more about transmission line theory, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on transmission line theory. This is my email. If you have any question regards on today's discussion, please drop me an email. Before I continue, I'd like to urge you guys to support this channel by pressing the like and also the subscribe button. Please also turn on your notification bell in order to receive more information from this channel. Guys, I really need your help. Nowadays, there is lesser and lesser knowledge sharing videos. So I hope you can support this channel by really support it through giving the likes and also subscribe to this channel. Once again, thank you so much. Before we jump to the discussion on VSWR, let's do a very quick recall on a lossless transmission line. This is the equation that I have derived earlier on on the previous few video. So if you are not able to recall how I actually obtained this equation, okay, again, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Okay, so over there, you will definitely see how I actually derived this equation. Okay, so this VZ here okay, basically indicate the voltage at any particular point on the transmission line. Okay, so in short, this is basically to indicate any voltage point okay, at any point of the transmission line. From this equation, you can see that this VZ is a function of incident wave and also refracted wave. Okay, let me quickly define what is incident wave and refracted wave. For incident wave, is simply from the source all the way to the load. Okay, so basically they propagate in this direction. When there is a mismatch, impedance mismatch, some of the incident wave will be refracted back. So basically this is what you mean by refracted wave. Some of the incident wave will be refracted back because of impedance mismatch. Okay, so basically this is how I obtain the incident wave and also the refracted wave. As I mentioned earlier on, this VZ can be at any point on the transmission line. Let me derive about this Z. Okay, so I would like to take a reference at the load. So therefore, the Z is equal to zero. Let's say this transmission line has a length of L. Okay, so since this is a reference line and I shift to the left, Okay, basically at the source, okay, the reference point will be minus L, okay, which is the length of the transmission line. So now if I want to find my voltage at the source, what I need to do is all my Z term I replace by minus L. So this term I replace by minus L. This Z term I replace by minus L. This Z term I replace by minus L. So everything I add up, this will be the voltage at the source. Pretty straightforward, right? So as I mentioned earlier on, this VZ can be at any point on the transmission line. Again, you can imagine that, for example, there will be a particular cases where the incident wave is actually in phase with the refractor wave, which means that incident wave plus refractor wave. For example, at so many points on the transmission line, definitely there will be at a particular point where the incident wave is completely out of phase with the refracted wave. So therefore, 
the VZ will be simply the incident wave minus away the refracted wave. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Okay, but don't worry. On the next few slides, I'm going to further discuss on this. But keep this in mind. This VZ, which is the voltage at any point of the transmission line, is simply the submission of incident wave plus the refracted wave. The incident wave and refracted wave can be in phase or they can be totally out of phase. Okay, so I will come to this shortly. This is what I have shown to you on the previous slide. Okay, let me put into more detail so you are able to understand this. As I mentioned, this is an incident wave. They travel from the source all the way to the load. Okay, now you can see that I actually add in a load. So let's say there is an impedance mismatch and therefore there is a refracted wave. So now, for example, if I want to know the voltage at this point, okay, what I'm going to do is basically I need to find my incident wave plus my refracted wave. Let's take a look on this diagram in order to understand better. Okay, the word original means that this is actually the incident wave. The word refraction basically means that this is the refracted wave. And you can also see that this is the standing wave. Okay, so as I mentioned, this is a reference point. So you can imagine that this is a reference point here. Okay, so this is basically the voltage okay, that is indicated over here. So standing wave is basically the voltage at all the point at the transmission line. Okay, so basically this is the derivation of the standing wave. Basically, they are not really a moving wave. They are called standing wave or stationary wave. Basically, this standing wave indicates the voltage at all the location on the transmission line. Okay, so I hope this is clear. Okay, but no worry, I'll come back to this again. So if you take a look on this, you can see that the original signal can be in phase or out of phase with the refractor wave, and this will have the outcome of a standing wave. What is actually a VSWR? Okay, VSWR is a measure of how efficient RF power is transmit from the power source through the transmission line to the load. Okay, so if you take a look over here, you can see that basically this VSWR is going to indicate how efficient this incident wave can pass the power to the load in short. This is what you want to say over here. Maximum power transfer from the source to the load occurs when their impedance are matched. Okay, so I think this, without further di discussion, you should be able to understand when the source to the load, they have impedance that are matched, okay, we actually have a maximum power transfer, which means that all the power from the source will be able to transfer to the load. However, if the impedance are not matched or are not identical or mismatched, okay, some RF power will be reflected back, which I have mentioned early on. Okay, you can see over here, some portion of the original signal or incident wave, they actually reflected back. Okay, this result in a reduction in the amount of power delivered to the load. Okay, so instead of 100% deliver to the load, some of them actually reflected back. So I need to take away the power that actually reflected back. Okay, so this is what I mean. This reflection caused voltage standing wave. VSWR is defined as a ratio of the maximum voltage to the minimum voltage in the standing wave. Okay, so this is the standing wave. Okay, basically this is the voltage at all the point of the transmission line. Okay, the larger the impedance mismatch, the larger the amplitude of the standing wave. Okay, which means that the, the higher the mismatch, okay, you can imagine that the amplitude will be swinging higher. So this is what you want to say here. Okay, the voltage fluctuation comes about as a result of the voltage component from the forward power and the refracted power summing together. This is what I have mentioned earlier on. Okay, basically, this voltage up and down is because of the combination of the forward power plus the refracted power. As I mentioned earlier on, 
the forward power and reflected power, they can be in phase. They can be out of phase. And because of this, okay, basically, a mis uh, basically, a BSWR actually occur. Okay, so please take a look over here. Okay, I have defined Vmax and I have also defined mean minimum. So this is the maximum okay, voltage standing wave. And this is the minimum of voltage standing wave. I come to this shortly. As I mentioned earlier on, VSWR is simply defined as a ratio of maximum voltage to the minimum voltage in the standing wave. Okay, so it's governed by this equation, which is Vmax over Vmin. Okay, so this is the equation that I've shown it to you earlier on. Okay, so over here, as I mentioned, this is an incident wave. This is a refractor wave. Okay, as I rewrite this equation here, and I simplify the incidence and refracted wave as this equation here. So what will happen to Vmax? Okay, Vmax means that the incident wave and refracted wave, they are actually in phase. Okay, so basically when they are in phase, I actually add the voltage at the incident wave and also the voltage at the refracted wave. When they are actually at the minima, okay, so this means that the incident wave and the refractor wave, they are out of phase. So therefore, for Vmin, I actually use the voltage at the incident wave minus the voltage at the refractor wave. Okay, as I mentioned earlier on, VSWR is simply Vmax divided by Vmin. Okay, I have my Vmax over here, which related over here. I have my Vmin, okay, which is over here. So VSWR can be related either Vmax over Vmin. You can also okay, express VSWR by using this equation. Next, okay, it's quite similar. Okay, so this is what I have gone through on the previous slide. Okay, so this is the Vmax. Okay, what I'm going to do over here is I'm going to divide this whole thing by V okay, of the incident wave. So this will become 1. Vr divided by V of the incident wave. Same for the V mean. Okay, so basically you can see that I actually relate in this. So if you're still able to recall, okay, this is the refraction coefficient, okay, which is Vr over V incident. So therefore, I can replace this part here okay, as the refraction coefficient. And again, from VSWR, okay, I actually able to obtain, okay, VSWR is actually Vmax over Vmin. So basically, this is Vmax over Vmin. Basically, I can also obtain another set of equation for VSWR. In short, VSWR is actually equal to Vmax over Vmin. And also earlier on, I have calculated that VSWR is actually equal to the voltage at the incidence plus the voltage at the refracted wave over the voltage at the incident wave minus away the voltage at the refractor wave. So this is another way that we can express VSWR. And then later on, I also use another form to express VSWR with reference to refraction coefficient. With this, I'd like to end my discussion. Please sub to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for your strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Thank you so much.